We've been doing micro church for almost two years now, and it's wonderful, but I want to give you five reasons not to do it. Five reasons not to do micro church instead of what we might say is real church. And by real church, I mean conventional church. Like you show up on a Sunday morning, you attend a service that's prepared for you, and you participate, but someone else is leading the way in the worship service. Microchurch is different. Acts 2.42, the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. It says they continued to meet in the temple courts, yes, but also in each other's homes. They broke bread together. They just loved being together. And that's the core of this microchurch that we do. We meet in homes. As compared to conventional church, meet in a church-owned or rented space led by a pastor, preacher, song leader, the whole bit. Five reasons not to do micro church instead of real church. Number one, it takes more effort. It just does. It's not easy to do micro church. It's not. It's not as easy as someone else doing all the work where you show up for the show. You show up and someone else has prepared a message. Someone else has selected songs. It's not as easy. It takes more effort to do microchurch. Number two, there's no show. There's no show. After 22 years for me being on stage in conventional ministry, after that first time that we actually held church in our home, I was like, man, that was awful. (laughs) Like there was no feedback. There was no moment where I just had the crowd in my hands because I wasn't preaching a sermon. There was no moment where, man, that song really landed because we actually didn't even sing a song. There was no show. There was no stage. There was nothing to inspire. But as I processed it, and as I listened to people who were a part of it said it was better than the show. So if you like the show, yeah, Microchurch has no show. There's no stage. There's no show. Number three, you can't get lost in the crowd. There's no anonymity. I think that's self-explanatory. Number four, there's no motivational speaker to get you fired up or to get you beat down. There's not a motivational speaker. You might be inspired by the presence of other people who have a gift, but there's not a motivational speaker. That's a shift. If you need a motivational speaker to get you fired up, to get you beat down, someone that you just follow and you hang on their every word, yeah, you don't get that in micro church. You just get the scriptures. We open the scriptures, we talk them through. Now, in my experience, the scriptures are way more motivating than someone like myself saying, here's something I thought you needed to hear today. Number five, it's harder to skip. It does create accountability. You can't just wake up and decide whether you're going to church today. We're planning how many people are showing up for a meal, and the expectation is we all show up. So if you're not going to, we try to communicate ahead of time. It's harder to skip. You can't just attend or not attend. It's a commitment. Those are five reasons not to do micro church instead of conventional church. But I also realize these days, many people who are full on believers have left church and they've left fellowship and they experience church by watching a show online with a motivational speaker. They listen to music that's been recorded and made available to them and they're out of fellowship and they open their scriptures every morning or whatever. They're in the faith, but they have no fellowship. And yeah, it's easier. So five reasons to not do micro church instead of no church. Number one, it does take devotion to do micro church. It's a commitment. It'll call your bluff. It does take devotion. Number two, it requires input. It's a conversation. It's not just scrolling and liking and sharing memes and things. And it's not just reading something thoughtful and doing a prayer journal. I think those are beautiful things. But you show up and and not everyone always talks, but it does require input. You're there as one of six or eight or 10 or 12 people. And you're supposed to bring something. Number three, it creates faith relationships. Imagine taking the friendships that you have right now that are based in a common interest and adding faith as not just a common interest, but a common goal and desire. 
the change is how you do relationship that way. And so if, if that's not a good thing, don't do micro church because it does create faith relationships. Number four, it's not always safe. It's just not. We do our best to create safe spaces. And in my experience, I don't know of any time that it hasn't been safe in a true sense, but it doesn't always feel safe. You might be asked to share something. You might be asked, what tension does this create for you? And it might be different than something it creates for someone else. Or you might find yourself in a spot where you have to ask for prayer for something that feels vulnerable to you. And of course, in our setting, we don't force anything unsafe. Of course not. Like, we do it well. We do it wisely. But... If you're looking for just the safety of a bubble wrap around you where you don't get to know people and you have been hurt by fellowship and things like that, yeah, this won't feel safe to you. It is safe, but it doesn't feel safe. And number five, it will challenge you. It'll challenge you to open up the scriptures and go through them verse by verse asking questions of the text, asking questions of the apostles who wrote them, seeking to understand where it even challenges your prior understanding and to be in conversation with people who are seeking the same thing and doing it in a communal setting. It'll challenge you all the above for all the reasons why you shouldn't do micro church. It will challenge you. And so actually, I would say those are 10 reasons why you should do microchurch. Those are 10 reasons to do microchurch. It takes more effort. There's not a show. You can't get lost in the crowd. There's no motivational speaker to get you fired up or beat down. It's harder to skip. It takes devotion. It requires input. It creates faith relationships. It's not always safe. And it will challenge you. I think those are good reasons to do it. I believe it's better. That's not to say that conventional church is bad. I'm helping a church right now with conventional church, leading worship. And as I say, the heart of the believer wants to be wherever the believers are gathered. And so I don't care where that is. It can be a huge crowd. It can be a small crowd. My heart just wants to gather where believers are gathered. And so there's nothing wrong with meeting in conventional settings. But I do believe this is better. In the conventional setting, you go to real church, and then if you want, you can supplement that with a small group setting. The way we look at micro church, that smaller setting is real church. And if you want, you can supplement that with a larger gathering. So I actually do believe it is better for all the reasons why you shouldn't do it, all the things that make it hard, it is better. Such is the case with so many things in life that it's the things that are worth it that are actually not always the easiest. I also believe that we may one day have this as our only option. And if we do face persecution, which Jesus said we would, I believe the micro church model, the network of micro churches where people are in close relationship with each other and then with other people from other micro churches that spread out network of micro churches, I think will survive whatever the enemy would throw at it and not just survive, but thrive. I believe it's better. If you're interested in joining a micro church, I'd love to talk to you. I'll put a link in the description below. Let's talk. Be encouraged. I believe that if you put yourself into this sort of a setting, you will grow in your faith. If you found yourself disillusioned with church, this is what you've been looking for. That's what we were looking for. So reach out. Be encouraged. Even if there are 10 reasons why you shouldn't do microchurch, those are 10 reasons why you should do microchurch. Part of my call is to strengthen and encourage anyone who's interested in this. And so reach out, please, wherever you live, reach out. Oh man, these are exciting times. Amen.